Hello, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to model, rig, and animate a simple shock absorber in Blender. Let's get started. Let's start by modeling a simple shock absorber. Press Shift A and add a cylinder to the scene. Move it one meter up on the Z axis. Press Tab to enter edit mode. Select the top face vertices and move them down along the Z axis. Press I to inset, then E to extrude. Inset again, extrude again. Inset one more time, but this time extrude inward. Press Z to switch to wireframe view and adjust the depth of the hole. Switch to top view, select the inner cylindrical hole and press Shift D to duplicate it. Press S to scale it down a bit. Select the top edge of the inner cylinder and move it slightly up on the Z axis. Press E to extrude, then S to scale. Press F to fill the top face. If some vertices are overlapping, press A to select all, then M and merge by distance to clean them up. You can also select some edges and press Ctrl B to bevel them. Now, let's separate the piston part from the bottom section. Hover over the piston and press L to select all linked vertices. Then press P and separate by selection. Go back to object mode. Select the piston, and now it can move as a separate object. Right-click and choose Shade Auto Smooth. In the Viewport Shading menu, enable Cavity to see more surface details. Press A to select all, then Ctrl A and apply rotation and scale to make the geometry uniform. Finally, right-click and choose Set Origin and Origin to Geometry to center the origins of all parts. Now let's model the spring. First, move the top piston to the open position. Select the bottom part and go into Edit Mode. Select one of the vertices, then press Shift-D to duplicate it. Press P and separate by selection to make it a new object. Switch to Object Mode and select the new point you just created. Press R to rotate it you'll see that its origin point is right in the center. This is important, or the screw modifier won't work correctly. Now, go to the Modifiers tab and add a screw modifier. Set the screw value to 0.4. Increase the iterations until the top end of the spring reaches the upper point. If needed, move the top piston slightly down. Increase the viewport steps value to make the spring look smoother. Once it looks good, apply the screw modifier. Right-click and choose Convert to Curve. Then go to the Curve Properties tab and under the Geometry section, increase the bevel depth to adjust the spring's thickness. Right-click and select Shade Smooth. Enable fill caps to close the ends of the spring. Next, let's make the spring ends flat where they touch the pistons. Enter Edit Mode. Select the last control point of the curve Enable Proportional Editing and move it slightly down. Do the same for the bottom end of the spring. Finally, apply Rotation and Scale and set the origin to Geometry to center it properly. Now let's rig the shock absorber mechanism. Press Shift-A, go to Armature and add a single bone. To make the bone visible, open the Armature Properties tab and enable In Front under the Viewport Display panel. Go to the Bone Properties tab and rename the bone to Bottom. Let's parent this bone to the bottom part of the mechanism. First, select the bottom model, then hold Shift Select the Bone. Press Ctrl P and parent the bone. Now, if you go into Pose Mode and move the bone, you'll see the bottom part move along with it. Go back to Object Mode and select the piston. Press Shift-S and Cursor to select it to move the 3D cursor to the top piston's origin. Select the bottom bone, go into Edit Mode, and press Shift-A to add a new bone at the cursor. Rename this new bone to Top by pressing F2. Right-click or press Alt-F to flip its direction. Move the bone down along the Z-axis, so its head lines up with the top piston. Switch back to object mode. Select the top piston first, then hold Shift, select the armature.
press Ctrl P and bone to parent it to the top bone. Finally, go back to pose mode and move the bones to test the setup. Now let's make the bones follow each other using damped track constraints. Select the bottom bone and open the bone constraints tab. Add a damped track constraint. Set the target to the armature and the sub target to top. Now, when you press G and move the bottom bone, it will always point toward the top bone. Do the same for the top bone. Add another damped track constraint. Set the target to the armature and the sub target to bottom. Now, when you move either bone, you'll see that they always follow each other's direction. However, we need to add a limit distance constraint between them so the piston doesn't move too far. With the top bone selected, add a limit distance constraint. Set the target to the armature and the sub target to bottom. Move the top bone down along the Z-axis to the lowest point you want it to reach. Then add another limit distance constraint with the same target and sub-target, but this time set clamp region to outside. Now, when you press G and move the bone, the piston will stay within its upper and lower limits. Alright, now let's add a bone for the spring. In object mode, select the armature and go into edit mode. Select the tail of the bottom bone and extrude it upward along the Z-axis. Select this new bone and press Alt-P and clear parent, keep connection, to disconnect it. This means it still has a parent-child relationship with the bottom bone, but you can now move it freely without breaking the hierarchy. Move the head of this bone so it lines up perfectly with the bottom center of the spring. You can switch to wireframe view to align it more precisely. Then select the tail and move it so it matches the top end of the spring. Press F2 and rename the bone to stretch. Now let's parent the spring to this bone. Go to pose mode and make sure the stretch bone is selected. Switch to object mode, select the armature, then shift plus, select the spring. Enter edit mode on the spring. Press A to select all control points, then press Ctrl H and hook to selected object bone. We parent the curve based spring to the stretch bone, so the spring's stretching motion stays synchronized with the bone's length. As the bone changes length, the spring automatically follows that deformation. Now let's add a stretch to constraint to the stretch bone. Go to object mode, select the armature, then switch to pose mode. Open the edit menu and uncheck lock object modes. This allows you to switch quickly between object and pose modes. With the stretch bone selected, go to the bone constraints tab and add a stretch to constraint. This constraint makes a bone stretch toward its target. It extends as it moves closer to the target and contracts as it moves away. Set the target to the armature and the sub-target to top. Now, if you select the top bone and move it down along the Z-axis, you'll see the spring compressing. When the spring compresses, it also expands sideways on the X and Z axes, which is not what we want. To fix that, set maintain volume to none. Now, when the spring is compressed, it no longer expands sideways. There's one more issue. When the piston reaches its lower limit, the top of the spring goes inside the piston. To fix this, select the stretch bone again and go back to its constraint settings. Adjust the head tail value to around 0.3 you'll see that the spring no longer penetrates the piston. However, if you move the piston to its upper limit, the spring stays slightly below where it should be. Setting head, tail back to zero fixes that. To make this adjustment automatic, we'll need to add a driver to this value. Hover over the head, tail value, right click, and choose add driver. We want the top bone's movement on the global Z axis to control this value. The goal is simple. When the top bone is at its upper position, the head tail value should be zero, and when it's at the lower position, it should be 0.3. I shared the bone's position data with ChatGPT, and it generated the driver expression for this setup. Now, I just copy that expression and paste it into the expression box. Set the driver object to the armature and the bone target to top. Choose the global Z location of the driver bone. That's it. We have solved the issue. Now let's move on to the shock absorber animation. In object mode, add a cube on top of the piston. Go to the physics properties tab and add an active rigid body. Next, 
select the bottom part of the mechanism, enter edit mode, select its bottom face, and press Shift D to duplicate it. Press P and separate by selection to make it a new object. Select the new object and add a rigid body, but this time set its type to passive. Now, hold Shift and select both rigid bodies, the top active and the bottom passive one. Go to the object menu, rigid body and connect. Select the newly created empty object. Go to the rigid body constraint settings and set the constraint type to generic spring. Under angular limits, Set all axis values to 0 degrees to lock any rotational movement. Under linear limits, set X and Y to 0, but leave the Z axis limits as they are. This allows the piston to move only up and down. In the spring section, set all angular spring values to 0. In the linear spring section, set X and Y to 0, and set the Z axis stiffness value to 20. Press spacebar to play the simulation, you'll see the cube bouncing smoothly on the spring. Now let's make the cube control the top bone's location using a child of constraint. Select the top bone and go into pose mode. In the bone constraints tab, add a child of constraint. Set the target to the top cube. Enable only the location Z option so it affects just the vertical movement. If needed, click Set Inverse to bring the spring back to its original position. Play the animation again, and now you'll see the spring compress and stretch naturally as the cube moves. You can select the empty object and adjust the spring stiffness value to make the spring feel stiffer or softer. Use the damping value to control how quickly the motion fades out. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.